Hello, welcome to my bookshelf, and today I'm excited to do another Top 5 Wednesday. And this week's category involves my top picks for books without romance in them. So this is kind of in response to last month's topics that had two weeks involving topics relating ships and relationships in books. And so as kind of a nod to all of us who had trouble uh, including me, uh, coming up with choices for those categories and, you know, not being able to really participate because ships just aren't really things that, at least me personally, I that I'm interested in. Um, I have nothing against them. I just... Romance is kind of a secondary for me in a book. I, for the most part, I don't search out books where, like, the only plot point is romance. I want more from a book, for the most part. Um, I am talking generalities. I have read many books and probably will continue to read books where its only thing is romance. It's just not my favorite genre, but I do enjoy a good romance within a book. But I think it's hard to find a book that is able to balance both of them. I think that at least the books that I've read, they tend to kind of pick one or the other to focus on. So it's really either all about the romance, you know, and then like the plot comes second or the plot comes first and then romance is just kind of thrown in there and you know sometimes it just doesn't seem to fit. So I think that sometimes it's kind of hard to get both in and to give both equal treatment and to have them done really well without either one suffering for it. So that being said, it can be kind of challenging I think for authors to do the right balance, at least for someone like me who's just not a huge fan of romance. But that all being said, this whole week's topic is not about romance, it's about books that are just good books without any romance in it. So in no particular order, my first pick is And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. And this is a classic mystery novel by, of course, the Queen of Suspense. And all I do remember, because I will admit that it's been a while since I've read this book, I think I was in middle school, but it was so good and it left a really big impact on me as a reader and I've always wanted to reread it, so I do plan to in the future, which is why I bought my own copy of it. So one day I shall reread this and I'm sure that it will live up to the awesomeness that I remember as a middle schooler. But, you know, these ten strangers are invited to this island and they start dying off one by one and it's kind of the whole whodunit kind of mystery. You know, you have to figure out in this, you know, enclosed space who is killing off everyone and why. This is just one of those awesome mystery books and it fits the category. As far as I remember anyway, there isn't any romance in this book. And it's just a good story, which is why it's on this list. So my next pick for books without romance is The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime by Mark Haddon. And this was a really unique book. I've never read any book quite like this before, but it has a main character who is on the autism spectrum and it's from his point of view and we get to kind of explore his investigation into this incident um, of the dog in the nighttime. And so we get to see him, you know, try to figure out who sadly killed this dog. Um, but it's about so much more than that. That's just kind of the inciting incident, but we find out so much more about him as a character and as a person. And it's just a really good book, and I think it's told in a very unique way, or at least in a way that's not normally told in, um, or at least by a character who isn't our typical character. So there's a lot of unique things about this story, and I just thought it was really interesting to see a different perspective and a different person with their own unique personality and their way of seeing the world, which is so cool and one of the many reasons why I love reading because we get to kind of jump into someone else's world and see things the way they do. As I'm sure you can guess, it fits the category. There's no romance in this book at all. It's about a lot more than that. And so I just, I really appreciated this book for the kind of story it was. Okay, my next pick should be of no surprise to anyone who has been watching my channel, especially recently. And that would be Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. Um, I say that because I recently announced this as my favorite book so far of 2017. But we shall see. It could change. Who knows? Maybe I'll read a lot 
better books, I, I, who knows. But as of right now, this is my current favorite book of the year. And we follow a fireman in this dystopian society. And firemen in this world do not put out fires, but instead start them, specifically to burn books, because books are not allowed. But there's so much more happening in the society than just burning books. There's a lot of other things that aren't allowed in the society, and we slowly get to kind of figure out what happened, what changed, and what this all means, you know, why is this the way that it is? And, you know, what is so wrong with this kind of society and what's missing and I just think it's so well done. I just, I really enjoyed the writing. It's so beautiful and vibrant. I think that's the best word I can come up with. It's just very descriptive. I think that the world building in this story is really good. I mean, it really isn't that long of a story, but I think you really just understand the pain that the society is in. Um, but on top of it, I think the story is really important for people in our own society to read today. I think that there's a lot of things in here that really would hit home to someone from nowadays. Even though this was written, you know, 60 plus years ago, I think it has a lot of really relevant topics. And so it's just one of those awesome books and I can, I can understand now why it's always been, you know, hailed as a classic and something that a lot of kids read in school. It's just a fantastic story without any romance in it, so. Alright, the next pick for this week's list is The Hobbit by Tolkien. Um, I really don't think I need to say a whole lot about this book because I think everyone knows quite a bit about The Hobbit and just The Lord of the Rings in general, but um, this one does not have any romance in it and it follows Bilbo, a little humble hobbit who lives in his hobbit hole and wants to be left alone but is not allowed to be left alone and he starts his first ever adventure with uh, some dwarves as they try to reclaim their treasure. So. It's just a really good story, and again, it doesn't have any romance. It's just about this epic adventure, and it doesn't need that to make it better or worse, you know? It's just it's just great on its own merits, and again, one of the many reasons why I enjoy this book. It's not brought down by extra story elements that are unnecessary, because I think this book proves that it wasn't necessary, at least for this story to be told. So it was refreshing because I think that most stories just kind of default put in a romance and I don't like that. I mean if the romance should be in there and it really adds to the story then awesome. Of course I want it in there but I think that a lot of times it's just thrown into stories that didn't really need it in the first place. So I appreciated just the adventure on its own. Okay so my last pick for this category is I, Robot by Isaac Asimov. Now this book kind of cheats a little bit with the category in the sense that there is a short story in the science fiction short story collection that does involve some kind of romantic situation. Um, let me explain. So the short story involves a mind reading robot and the whole story revolves around the fact that this robot can read minds, so he's reading other people's secrets. And the secret that he reads from Dr. Calvin is that she has a crush on one of her male co-workers. And so this is just one of the many things that kind of starts the plot going. And so while there's romance, kind of, in one of the short stories, it's not a pressing theme even in that short story. It could have been any relational issue. It could have been replaced with anything, honestly. Like, it could have been a different secret that she had, as long as it involved, you know, another person. So maybe she really didn't like a coworker, but she always pretends that she does, or whatever it is. But it didn't have to be the fact that she had a crush on someone. It could have been something else. But, I mean, even leaving it the way it is, it's dropped after that, it's not brought up again, it doesn't end in this grand romantic relationship, it's not resolved at all in any kind of romantic way. It's honestly just a plot point for that one story. So I would say this book still fits in this category because romance is by no means an important part of this book. And so talking more about the book itself though, this is just a really fun short story collection. It's very intellectually engaging. Each short story is basically its own logic puzzle. 
it involved some kind of robot in this unique situation, and the scientists had to figure out, you know, why the robot is acting the way it is, and how they can fix the problem that it's causing. And so it's a really interesting short story collection. I found it to be really engaging throughout, and I thought that Eismoff did a great job of explaining each situation and each solution, and I just thought it was really funny throughout as well, which I was kind of surprised by. It made it a pretty enjoyable read overall. Okay, that's this week's list of my top five best books without any romance in them. Thank you for watching this video, and until next time.